Elsewhere in the Quran, Allah said, إن في حلق السماوات والأرض باختلاف الليل والنهار لآيات لأول الألباب. Most definitely, in the creation of the heaven and earth and the alternation of night and day are indeed signs for those who reflect, for those who think. Then Allah said, الذين يذكرون الله كياما وقعودا وعلى جنوبهم ويتفكرون في حلق السماوات والأرض. Those who sit down, those who lie down on their side, then they reflect on the heaven and the earth, how it came about without any disproportion. At the end, they realize that these things cannot happen by itself. It's got to be from a superior mind above each and every mind. And they come to say, oh my Lord, you did not create everything that we see today for just, for just a play purpose. It's got to have a meaning. And those are the Ulul Alba. So today I'm going to be giving you some information that scientists today have come to realize that through painstaking research, when in fact in the Quran it is given to us over 1,400 years ago in the Arabian desert, far from civilization. So the question is, how could the messenger Muhammad be able from his own figment of imagination understand this intricate knowledge and we know clearly he's never gone to any institution, no school. Look, even if he, let's assume, for the sake of argument, let's assume that Muhammad went to University of Medina, even though no education. Let's assume over 1,400 years ago, the information he gave us today, it is so contemporary. How in the world could a man living in the desert, far from civilization, be able to understand the intricate connection between the knowledge of science, cosmology, compared with the knowledge of today? Is it possible? No. Let me give you an example with uh, the, the protected roof that we have over our body. You know, we have a roof protected over our body, in the heaven, above us, that we can see. Scientists who specialize on this information, they know. There are so many protective layers. If Allah should allow all this, you know, uh, 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 asteroids and comets and, you know, uh, uh, galaxies and quasars and quantums to, you know, to swing around and just hit the earth, we will die. It is just like you stamping you know, uh, uh, an ant, just stamp on it, it, it just dead. That is how big some of Allah's creation is. Compared to them, the earth is nothing, it's insignificant. It's like you comparing a rock with, a, with, a, with, 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 with five cents in your hand, a small little coin. So the earth we think is big, it is not big, it is nothing, absolutely uncalled for, unmentioned when we compare with huge matters that Allah have created that we can't even see. So science today are telling us that there are so many things, so many heavenly bodies up in the celestial. You know, after they've burned their energy, they finish their work and they begin to, you know, run away and fall. Once they begin to fall on earth, you know, uh, we, can't, we can't even quantify it. Had it been we know exactly what is happening, we will reflect indeed and understand that all this thing does not happen by itself. Among them, we have troposphere, ozonosphere, you know, ionosphere, mesosphere, exosphere. All these are levels above the earth atmosphere which we cannot see. And each and, every, each, each and every one of them is playing a role for earth mankind to live and enjoy. Our, and, and then we understand. The sun, the moon, all these things are stationary bodies that we can't even quantify how big they are. And then we have the ozone layer. The ozone layer is acting as a, protect, a protective shield to mankind anything that is detrimental about to come into this earth of ours allah in his wisdom once it's reached ozonosphere the ozone layer it will hit it back to come to where it came from so the ozone layer is allowing the good radiation to come into the earth and then it send back the bad ones from where they come from or it disintegrate them that is what it does ozone layer it is like a sort of like a recycle area area allowing the good Radiation that we need to come to the earth and sending back the harmful ones to come to go to where they came from. But once they reach that ozone layer, 
That is where we call the protective layer. So Allah said in the Quran, وَجَعَنَّ السَّمَاءَ سَكْفًا مَخْفُوزًا وَهُمْ أَنْ آيَاتِهَا مُغُذِدُونَ Allahu Akbar. We set up in the heaven a protective seal guiding you and safe for you. Yet you don't you don't you know uh, uh, follow the law that I've given you. Wahum an ayatina mughidun. You are playing games with the word, with the ayat, with the sign, with the revelation that I've given you. But meanwhile, what Ja'anna Sama Asakfan Mahfuza. Science called that level magnetosphere magnetosphere or the van allen belt professor van allen was the one that realized this quantum that there is something above the earth atmosphere protecting us like a shield we can see that but scientists with you know intricate uh, machinery they were able to detect that there is a, 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 a deliberate layer forming the belt as a belt around the earth atmosphere allowing good things and protecting us from half harmful radiation. Allahu Akbar. The Quran mentioned this information over 1,400 years in the Arabian desert. The question is, who told Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa far from civilization at that time in the desert without any computerization, without no satellite, nowhere in Mecca and Medina, yet this man was able to give us information that is consistent with today. How did he generate this information? It's got to be from someone who is reeling him with this information. That's why Allah said, In huwa illa zikirun lili adameen. This is no less than, you know, a revelation for the whole of mankind. Tanzilul min rabbili adameen. Tanzilul min rabbili adameen. It came from the Lord of the world. Who is that Lord? Allah. Because his knowledge is beyond our quantification. We can't quantify Allah's knowledge.